Hello everybody, welcome back to M1 Concourse for the Cars and Coffee, the first one of the year at this location. And I'll be honest, it was a, a little cold, so there wasn't that much there relative to what I'm sort of hoping for as the months go by. I think it was like 34 degrees. Either way, there was still some interesting stuff there, just not from Britain. Britain, probably because they're mainly convertibles, did not make that much of an appearance. There was a Jag, and there was a Lotus, and that was pretty much it. I'm, I'm kind of underwhelmed from them. Also, no Italians, practically all. I think there was a Lamborghini, but other than that, nothing too crazy. I think it was just a Huracan. So instead, we're going to move on to America. And there was some pretty interesting vehicles there. An old Jeep Williams from the 40s. There were a few custom hot rods. That was one of the themes, is hot rods. Quite like the orange one, the exposed engine. Meticulously cleaned. I can never think of doing that. That looks like a lot of work. But then there were the usual swaths of muscle cars, ranging from classic Mach 1s to GTOs to Impala SSs. There were... A lot, and they all look fantastic. Then There weren't too many modified ones. This was very original spec, not too many modifications. I don't think this is an L80, an LO82 Dart, the Dragster Superstock. I think it's just a homage, because there were a few modifi modified ones. Like, how obviously, this is not a real Daytona. I would love for it to be a real Daytona, but it's not. No, there were a few modification-focused ones, though. Uh, the paint job on the Corvette was immaculate, just about to see the hint of ghost flames. It's a great looking paint job in the color, and the light, you just can't see it all that well on camera, when I zoomed in. And then there's this thing with a massive twin turbo setup that I would imagine is very, very fast with a roll cage and ridiculously huge rear tires. That makes a ridiculous amount of power. And I'll be honest, this probably doesn't make that much power, but it is a single seater. Like, it, it looks like one of those dirt racers from like you see on the dirt oval tracks. That's what that reminds me of. I don't know if it is that, but that's what I think of when I see it. And there were a few modern cars. We're not just dating back to the 60s here. We got some brand spanking new ones, a lot of brand spanking new ones, like the Ram T-Rex. And we got sedans too. We got the Holden, I'm sorry, Pontiac, sorry. Chevy SS, they're all pretty much the same. We got a few Cadillacs, the CTSV Championship Edition, which is always nice to see. Love the paint job on it, but I also really like this. The new CT5 Blackwing. Yeah, it looks great in baby blue. It's also not going to be the only baby blue vehicle we see that's brand new, ironically enough. I think it looks great, it's fast, and it's a phenomenal vehicle to drive from what I've heard. This is definitely fast, the Tesla Model S Plaid. Not sure if it's the best looking, although it is somewhat timeless, I will give it that. And it certainly doesn't sound very good, if at all. But it is brutally fast, with 1100 horsepower. Certainly faster than the Polestar 2, which is just a decent electric car. And then we move on to the Japanese. There were quite a few of the Japanese vehicles. We actually had a good balance this year. There wasn't one dominating country, if you will. It was nice and evenly split between America, Japan, and Germany. And there were some pretty good Japanese cars. An A80 Super next to an R35 GTR. There was an RX-7 from earlier. Um, sadly, no autozams on the K cars. I guess it's a little too cold. And yeah, there was a new Super, which is fine. I think it has the GR Sport pack on it, I think. And the usual stuff, but really what I'm interested in was the brand new 2022 model year Toyota GR86. I love the GT86. You see a ton of those every year. But the new GR86, I think it looks really good. It perfectly blends aggressiveness with, well, the playfulness of the GR86 series. But we move on to the Jammons. And BMW had an okay presence. Not really that much new or that interesting. Those two, the Z3 Coupe and the M and the uh, 635 CSI were the big hitters for BMW. And yeah, the rock crawling diesel jet is kind of awesome in a post-apocalyptic family sort of way. If you 
weird blend there. But this is a Porsche show at the end of the day. They're, the best cars were from Porsche, I would argue. The 356, there were a few 911s. A weird looking 914. Never really liked the 914, but with this body kit and this paint scheme, I do actually quite like it. And then we have the Cayman GT4, not the Cayman GT4 RS, that's not in the US yet. But this is the GT4, the sort of lower spec, and again, I think it looks great. But the 911 GT3 is what you want, in my personal opinion. And what's better than a GT3 from 2017? A GT3 from 2022, yes! The brand spank new 911 GT3 from the 992 generation was here. And it's a masterpiece of engineering. It was my favorite car in show simply because of the amount of engineering that was put into this vehicle. The wing hangs down to improve aerodynamics. The front is now double wishbone suspension. It's got four-wheel steering. It's a masterpiece of engineering, and I absolutely adore it, especially in this baby blue paint job. This show was really quite fascinating. No, it's not as good as previous shows that I've seen. And the Lancia Integrale is still the best that I've ever seen. But I saw a lot of new cars this time. There were a lot of brand spanking new ones, a lot of old ones, but you don't really see that all that much. Normally you have to wait until auto shows, something like that, to see the latest and greatest. But these were pretty damn impressive vehicles. And if this is in the middle of March, late April, well, this is going to be a good year.